Hello and welcome to Capitol Hill. I'm Lyndall Curtis. All the talk today was about jobs, both coming and going. Qantas announced 500 job cuts, but the unemployment figures for January showed a slightly brighter picture. Unemployment fell slightly during the month and there were more than 46,000 jobs created, some part-time, some full-time. In question time, it was rowdy on a Thursday as usual. The Nationals leader, Warren Truss, was tossed out of Parliament for an hour for unruly behaviour by the, by the Speaker, Peter Slipper, and his colleagues joined him. Joining me to discuss the day's events are Nationals MP, George Christensen, and Labor MP, Sid Sidebottom. Welcome to you both. Okay, thank you. George, if I could ask you first about question time, why did the Nationals walk out after Warren Truss was, was sin bin for an hour? Well, look, Lendl, the Nationals support their leader, and uh, unfortunately, uh, my Labor colleague can't say the same thing about his whole uh, party, but we back him fully. Uh, and, you know, Warren's been in the Parliament 22 years. He's a true gentleman of the Parliament. There's uh, a, a practice in place, a long standing parliamentary tradition that the leaders have shown uh, some leniency and uh, today that wasn't shown uh, by the Speaker and uh, we made a protest and I, I think that that was uh, well and truly heard by the Speaker. So your protest should have been taken, should have been seen as a reflection on the Speaker's ruling, your disagreement well, with look, the Speaker's ruling? We joined, we joined uh, our leader, uh, we're showing solidarity with our leader and uh, the Speaker can take it, uh, whatever message he wants from that. The MPs, do you, do you accept that MPs should be well behaved at all times? They're, they're, and on your side, Sid, as well, there's interjections, there's noise during question time? Well, look, I, uh, MPs do get rowdy all over the place, uh, but look, even Sid would probably agree that Warren's probably one of the least offensive in the House, and, uh, you know, there was worse going on uh, that didn't get picked up, and, uh, look, Warren getting thrown out, I, I, uh, I'm dumbfounded, we all were, and uh, so we joined him in leaving the chamber as a, a sign of support for him. Sid, there were Labor MPs thrown out as well. Is there any way you can improve behaviour in the chamber? Oh, well, look, um, I think it's a pretty robust place. Um, the Nationals leader defied standing orders and was asked to leave like anybody else who defies standing orders and uh, the lemmings went after him. So that's their business. I think we're in the House to do business and uh, we're representing our electorate and I think uh, and I don't want to sound like uh, uh, too prudish on this, but it's our job to be in there, not uh, trotting out after someone that's been removed under standing orders. If we could go now to the main issue of the day, Sid, the unemployment figures showed a better picture, but we also had news from Qantas of 500 job cuts, and we've had since since the the, the unemployment figures are a lagging indicator, they're a look back since then, there have been job cuts. Is the picture a patchy one at best? Uh, well, it's patchy, I, I wouldn't say at best. Um, it is patchy and, and we do have, a, some would argue, a two, even a three-tiered economy. Um, when you compare it with the rest of the world, we're very lucky, but of course we don't often think of what's happening globally. Uh, it was good news today and uh, it was disappointing that Question Time was all about everything else but that good news. Uh, it was very disappointing to hear about uh, uh, the prospect prospective uh, Qantas uh, job cuts and uh, we've got to do everything we can to uh, make it easier for those people who may lose their job and we're asking Qantas uh, to work with its workforce uh, to try and uh, make that a as easy and as painless as possible although very disappointing that it is. George do you accept that that uh as with most things in the economy, the picture for employment and unemployment is a good news and a bad news story. There are some people uh, losing their jobs, but other people getting, their, getting jobs, and it's that side of the picture, the more positive side, that doesn't necessarily get the day-to-day -day headlines. Well, look, Lendl, we in the Coalition welcome you know, the creation of new jobs, but the reality is you look at the numbers behind these jobs and we see that about three quarters of the jobs that uh, were actually were created last month were, were part-time, in fact. Now, you know, uh, that shows that there's not many full-time jobs being created. We look uh, even further and we see that, uh, you know, 28,000 
new Australians were in the country uh, uh, last month as well, a lot of them migrants. So when you start putting those numbers into it, uh, you know, the smoke and mirrors start to fade away. And look, uh, 28,000 new Australians, more if you count the boat arrivals, I suppose. But, you know, uh, what, what this doesn't, what this uh, announcement today of these new jobs, which uh, I think is pretty airy-fairy, to be honest, what it, what, it, what it doesn't hide is the fact that there's about 4,400 real job losses uh, this year alone, and that is going to continue. But, but, but can you necessarily say that when you, we don't know the, the picture for job creation during the last month? Well, we do know there's been about 4,400 jobs that have been lost. I mean, we've had ANZ, which has shedded about 1,000. We've got the Macquarie Group that shedded uh, about 1,000 as well. Uh, you know, these are all through the economy. We're seeing them every day. And, uh, you know, now we're seeing Qantas uh, talking about shedding jobs. Um, I mean, how long is it going to go on? And at the same time, we've got the government seeking to impose a carbon tax on the economy. That's not going to help any business. It's not going to help Qantas. It's not going to help aluminium. Sid, is there a prospect that, that the news of the job losses and the headlines that gets could have an impact on confidence in the economy? Well, I know what is affecting the confidence in the economy, and that is an opposition that talks it down in every way and at every opportunity they can. And George, unfortunately, as good a guy that he is, really and truly just demonstrated it. There was good news today, participation rate up, which means that people looking for work are actually registering looking for it as well, which means that there is a, uh, a belief that the jobs are out there. So this is good news, 760,000 new jobs uh, since we came into government. And that's compared, that's compared not only to the past in Australia more recently, but also globally, and I wish the opposition would take a look, that is look up and look out instead of just following the leader over the cliff that they did if, today. If, if we could look out at both of your electorates, Treasury told a Senate estimates hearing today that the regional disparity in unemployment is actually getting better. There's less difference between the regions in unemployment. You both represent regional areas. George, if I could ask you, what's the picture like in your area? Well, look, my area is a very different area. It's being driven mainly by mining, and uh, so we have uh, a relatively low uh, unemployment level. But I've got to tell you that... Uh, even in that region there's a, there's a two-speed economy. You have uh, small businesses that are uh, actually feeling the pinch. There's people that are pulling back on spending. Uh, I have restaurateurs talking to me that are, that are worried, small businesses talking to me that are worried about uh, the downturn. I go up to the Sundays where uh, I have tourism and uh, those guys are going through hell and back. Uh, I've got to tell you that there's job losses everywhere. So, Do you, do you have the other side of the picture though, companies who struggle to find workers? Yes, I do have the other side of the, the coin there. There are a lot of different uh, companies, mainly to do with the resources sector, uh, and I companies that, uh, uh, that, that cater for uh, the resources industry that uh, do struggle. Um, they, they can't get the, uh, the skilled labour that they need, so that is a, a massive problem. And Sid, in your electorate? Yeah, just before I do, George did highlight um, some of the issues that are affected by regional economies, and particularly different tiers, but uh, George did mention the tourism industry, and of course that's greatly reliant on particularly overseas customers, and that, of course, is affected greatly by the Australian dollar. Now, the, Austra the high Australian dollar is affecting a lot of our economies, whether it's in the northwest of Tassie or in uh, George's seat of, of Dawson. In my seat, uh, we lost uh, some significant manufacturing jobs uh, more recently in our paper mills and, uh, and also uh, one of our vegetable processes. Uh, we came uh, to the conclusion that we needed to assist our region to diversify its economy and so we've invested several um, tens of millions of dollars in the region and that's actually gone to uh, ask uh, um, businesses, local businesses, to match us dollar for dollar to invest in new jobs. We've actually done that I and mean, there's something like 500 new jobs uh, have been created and more are in the pipeline. Uh, also uh, in my region, although we have lost um, a, a certain number of manufacturing jobs, there's no doubt about it. Some of the mining industry on the west coast in Tassie has taken that up. Uh, but also, exponentially, our daring industry in the far northwest where I live uh, is growing massively and there's been terrific investment more recently by us, but most especially by the private sector. So, 
in parts of the economy, in retail, it's been tough. I, I agree with George uh, with that as well. And confidence is an issue. But by heavens, if you're going to talk an economy down, George, don't expect people to stand there and say, well, we'll talk it well, up. Well, I think, Sid, that what we're finding is not that people are worried about us talking it down. They're worried about a carbon tax mainly and a bunch of other things that your government's doing. I mean, the carbon tax will absolutely decimate the tourism industry and there is no assistance that the government has, uh, has applied for the tourism industry. We've got the sugar industry in my seat and a lot of different agricultural sectors and you guys go on saying that agriculture's exempt and I know that you're the parliamentary secretary for that now but Sid, you've got to get out and talk to those people because the cane growers are telling me that they're going to be slugged $80 million over the next five well, years well, from the carbon well, George. tax. I mean, this is stuff yeah. that is going to I've impact seen, jobs and businesses. I, I, I've seen some of these figures that are bandied around, and I have to say, and you would expect well, this, of course, in the me, negotiation. So well, George, the we'll just, we'll just, we'll thanks, George. Just sit down, George. Manners up in Dawson, as there are in Braddy. <laughs> well, uh, go indeed. On. Um, uh, uh, the industry, of course, once it's going in and is part of the lobbying, right, to try and get negotiations in terms of the carbon tax and what can be compensated and what can't, of course come out uh, with these report after reports claiming it's going to be the end of the world and whatever. And with all due respects, it's not going to be as bad as all that. The Treasury modelling clearly shows that. And the households in particular that may be affected by this will be well and truly uh, uh, given an offset to do that. And along the way also businesses will benefit from another raft of our legislation through the mining tax. If so, you know, I, I think you've got to see it for what it is. The world hasn't ended, it won't end. And let people judge it in time, George, instead of talking it down before it even gets underway. If I could, if I could ask you a brief question about the Prime Minister's been talking about the transformation in the economy economy uh, with a focus on skills. Sid, is it a harder message to sell in regional Australia that, that um, some jobs might go, other jobs might be created and people need to get new skills to get what the Prime Minister called higher value, higher wage jobs? Y yes it is because it, it does involve a change and, and a fundamental change particularly in culture and, and the way people do things. But you see if you take agriculture for instance it's always coped with change. One of the things that agriculture is talking about in particular, and that's the full gamut in agriculture, is talking about that it actually can't get skilled labour, can't get people uh, to, uh, to come into agriculture, and yet it offers some of the most exciting jobs you could possibly want. If you're a tech head, you can do it in agriculture. If you like digging, you can do it in agriculture. If you want to drive something, it's in agriculture. And, and George, your view of, of well, people reskilling, getting new skills? Well, look, uh, we've got uh, a massive amount of people in the cities that, uh, you know, would be able to go to, to the uh, regional areas and work there. Uh, but there's no incentive for them to. I mean, the coalition has policies in place now that would uh, that would incentivise people to move out to those regions. Unfortunately, Sid, we're not seeing the government come across with anything similar. So uh, we need not just talk on this. We need action because there's businesses out there that have uh, labour shortages, mate, and it's hurting. It's hurting everyone. It's driving up prices in regional areas. Uh, cost of living's going up in places like Mackay. And that's all because of workforce shortages. And Sid, just one final quick question. Anyone in the Labor Party canvassing your vote for a leadership candidate at the moment? Absolutely Which not. Way is it, Sid? Absolutely <laughs> not. No, Rattle, not. Rattle I'm certainly not interested, and nor and is anyone else. Who, who, who and frankly, you, you the only people interested, listen to George. See, here's George <laughs> interested will. in our leadership. You're interested in it. I have to tell you, our caucus is not interested in it. People are doing their job, and uh, and certainly no one's canvassed me, and I've been around a while. And that's all we have to leave it, George Christmas. Thank you very much, bottom. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good on you, And George. thank you for joining <laughs> us today. Please nice. join us at the same time tomorrow.